Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. And in this video, we're going to continue with the assembly of the 84 CBX 750. <laughs> First job is uh, we're going to reassemble the uh, triple clamps. This shouldn't take too long. And then, uh, yeah, we're just going to pick away at it one piece at a time. <laughs> back on rear shock installed I think next we'll uh, move on to the rear wheel or the uh, front forks <laughs> front wheel has been uh, mounted there obviously um, it has not yet been aligned <clears throat> I have to go through that process once I get it off the stand here so there is a process where you have to only clamp up one side and bounce the front end a little bit and just make sure that you get that all centered and I'll do that once the brake calipers uh, have been mounted all right back on the table and uh, I've just finished torquing everything to the appropriate spec so the engine mounts are all tightened up all the pinch bolts on the triple clamp the top steering nut there for the top clamp handlebars all the pinch bolts swing arm pivot the i did not do the rear axle yet because that also has to be moved and adjusted
oil lines are back on. It's all new copper crush washers. Next thing is uh, these intake manifolds are supposed to go back on, but <clears throat> I did not prepare them yet. Kind of fell behind in my prep work, I guess. So I do have uh, only low ring gaskets. So there's uh, two of these on each carburetor boot. Um, before I get to doing that, um, so the one fits in the uh, in this base, and then the other one fits in here. So there's two per boot. Each of the boots is numbered somewhere on here. Okay, so you can see that one there. It says number one. But they are harder than I would like them to be. So I'm gonna soften these. So these are not 100% rubber. They're actually uh, rubber that's, I don't know what you call that, molded onto, I guess would be the best way to describe it, onto a uh, aluminum base. But I wanna soften those up. So they're gonna go into this solution for We'll probably put them in there for start off in about four hours, and that is uh, wintergreen oil and alcohol, and it's uh, sure it's one third wintergreen oil and two thirds alcohol, and uh, it's reusable. Obviously, the color of this it's been used to soak rubber parts for quite some time, and the good thing about it is for something this size, <clears throat> they they don't swell; they just get uh, more pliable, just like when they're new. And then even when they dry out, uh, they don't go hard again. All right, we'll see how many of these I can get in. I suspect it will only be two. Yep, two. So we'll just seal that up. At some point I'm gonna have to add some more alcohol and wintergreen to top that up. But there you go, That's uh, that'll stay in there now for, I don't know, most of the day. I'll pull it out sometime uh, about four or five hours from now. They're not torn, they're not ripped, they're not cracked. So, and I guess they're probably quite expensive as well, uh, given the, uh, they're not just a plain rubber boot, they do have that aluminum uh, cast and machine base in the bottom. So, uh, probably not cheap. And since I'm already at my budgetary limit on this bike, uh, this is one of the items that will get refurbished as opposed to being replaced. Got to draw the line somewhere. Just keep chucking money at this stuff, it gets out of hand. Okay, so we'll uh, start to reassemble the clutch. So I think the tricky part about this, as far as I can tell, is uh, I have to get the uh, those pins in here. As you can see here. These pins have to fit in the back of the outer clutch assembly. And so the trick is to get that outer assembly aligned so the, these get properly fitted. And also uh, I think you have to, there's those uh, large, larger uh, outer drive gears on the clutch. Um, there's a double set and they tend to kind of scissor so you have to get them to uh, to align to get it to get them to uh, to mesh with this uh, this gear set right here. So so you got to move those with the uh, with a with a screwdriver, and then kind of maneuver this. I think with a screwdriver to make sure that these are seating into the back of the uh, of the clutch. So we'll see how see how that adventure unfolds. <laughs>
So uh, I've cleaned the, uh, the face of here with uh, acetone, so now I'm just making sure that any of the, uh, the crank sealant that's on the face of here is cleaned off with the uh, razor blade. components back together uh, basically what I'm using is uh, contact cleaner just to I'll just go through each of these uh, connector blocks uh, before I, I go uh, put them back on and then once it's clean then I'll, uh, I'll use a little bit of uh, electrical grade uh, dielectric grease just kind of spray that on there I've already cleaned this one already so <laughs> together next uh, few steps are going to be a little slower because I got to do a tear down on the brake calipers and the master cylinder and well probably not a tear down on the master cylinder but at least to clean it um, but I am going to pull the, uh, the pistons from the calipers and clean all the crap out that's likely in there <clears throat> so I'll get all that done and then we can put the brakes back on it but uh, yeah, that'll take a little bit more time and then, uh, of course, uh, I still have to put uh, these uh, manifolds back on once they're ready. So more soaking for that, and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up again shortly. Okay, so uh, front brake calipers. First thing I'm going to do is just uh, remove this bolt here, so I can uh, disassemble the uh, pads and get those out of there. And then uh, I'll do that on both. And then the plan is I'm just going to use the uh, lever in the master cylinder to pump the pistons out. Get I'll use my piston pulling tool once I get them out far enough and then uh, clean everything out. Okay, so uh, once these clips are off, you can just push the two pins out. I just use a, a punch. Slide the pins out. Once the pins are out, the pads just fall right out. And then you're left with... Uh, the calipers and the two pistons on each side. So now I'm going to uh, see if I can pump those up and get them out. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just working these up one at a time. Uh, you pumping the lever using this uh, brake caliper piston tool just to kind of move them up a little bit. And if one gets a little too far, then I'm just kind of basically wedging it in so it can't it's hook it under here with a piece of wood or this the handle of this brush just so it can't pop right out um so i've got those ones out fairly far so before i pull those out completely and lose hydraulic pressure i'm going to move over to these ones uh, i'll lock this one up so it can't pull out anymore and see if i can pump up this one i'll lock both of these with something so they can't come out either there we go so this one's coming up slowly so I've got that one locked with the uh, wooden handle. All right, so there is the last one. Just to get these guys out. All right, so I got a bit of brake cleaner soaking in there. The actually everything was quite clean <coughs> inside the uh, inside those cylinders, and uh, and there's uh, needs to be cleaned out a little bit more. Uh, all the parts out and then we'll probably have to give it a bit of a coat of paint I guess but uh, and then uh, next is we're going to clean those pistons up so when I'm putting the pistons back in I just use a little bit of rubber grease on the pistons and on the, uh, the seals inside and then uh, I use this to push them in in the vise this is a 
actually it's a, it's a pin had a three-point hitch on my tractor as a spare one that I had laying around so um, it just works really well for kind of get it there's a piece actually sitting inside here right now so I can just crank that in and when I get that far I'll turn it around and push it in the rest of the way right, so there it turned it around now just uh, smoothly just crank it in seats those pistons just beautifully and then we're good to go all right so I cleaned everything I just gave a bit of silicone spray on the uh, the outside of these calipers and uh, copper grease on the pins so uh, these are ready to go back on and get bled shortly and uh, in the meantime I better order some new pads clean forgot to order them uh, I just put a new uh, boot here a new rubber on the shifter and these go on really really easy um, one, if you warm them up a little bit, but two, if you spray inside of them with some hairspray, um, it makes them glide on really easy. Works well with uh, bar grips too. And uh, then when it dries out, it's uh, it's sticky enough that it, uh, it just kind of glues it in place. So I recommend uh, sneaking into the bathroom and taking your wife's hairspray, put it in your cabinet. and deny everything. way up to put it and spin it and twist it and I came close to kicking the living bejesus out of it so uh, that was by far the most frustrating part of the uh, reassembly so far. <laughs> particular avenue of pain and suffering is now over so yeah if you put one of these things back in an airbox back into CBX 750 make sure you take the rear wheel off uh, insert it uh, sideways and then spin it around uh, to the right orientation once you get it in there it sounds easy when you say it um, it wasn't that simple but uh, that's the way you got to do it So there's two done. That was basically a little over 24 hours. The next two are going in. 
Uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I am waiting for a couple of things before I can move further uh, to the next stage because I need to get all that aluminum stuff uh, clear coated so I can get that valve cover back on. So then I can start install uh, installing the coils and uh, I also have to get the, the wiring harness installed in there at this point. So I'm going to wrap this one up and then we'll pick it up again when I get uh, some of my supplies uh, here for the shop and uh, hopefully the next one will be uh, complete to the point of getting this thing to run, fingers crossed. I'm still waiting for my starter motor. It's still not back from the rebuilder. So uh, thanks again for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please provide me any comments below. Always enjoy reading the comments. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you next time.